harvest has so far been a slow go across many areas of Nebraska. For some producers, taking out the crop of corn or soybeans will be the final action before spring. But for others, a cover crop will occupy the land over the off-season. Through funding from the Nebraska Soybean Board and the Nebraska Corn Board, a team of UNL researchers is now doing studies to try to learn more about the use of cover crops in this state. We recently talked with UNL Extension agronomist Roger Elmore to learn more about this project. Corn and soybeans are, are, the, are the standard here in the state. Uh, several million acres of both. Um, the, the idea of cover crops is it takes advantage of the period of time when those crops are not actively growing. So it allows us to use more of the growing season, uh, gives us a cover over the winter, and, and several other positive things. And, and honestly, uh, it hasn't been studied um, much at all. There's some studies uh, in the state, Paul Yassa and Swad Ermak have been doing some work, but this allows us to do across several locations, irrigated and dryland across the state. So it's it, it's it's uh, we're adding some science to the to the to the world of cover crops is what we're trying to do. Give me the details of what you're doing specifically. Well, we've got four locations, lots of cooperators across the state. Um, so we're up at Northeast at Concord and ARDC at Mead at Clay Center, which is an irrigated location, and out at Brule, another irrigated location. So at those locations, uh, we're working in either continuous corn or corn following soybeans or soybeans following corn. So three blocks at each location. And within those blocks, we, we have half of the experiment that will be planted. It's, they're already planted, mm -hmm. in fact. They were planted before the crop matured uh, into standing corn and soybeans, uh, simulating aerial seeding. And, and as soon as the crop is out, we'll be uh, drilling probably as low of till as possible, the same uh, treatments of um, cover crops into, this, into the other half of the experiment. Which cover crops specifically are you using in these locations? Well, we're, we've got a combination of uh, five different treatments, and uh, we're using rye and um, winter peas and veg as a legume mm -hmm. uh, mixture, and, and then radishes. And then a combination of those four, or yeah, of those four different um, crops, and, and then a cocktail, uh, which forms our fifth treatment, that in theory that co co cocktail has species, uh, including the four that I've just mentioned, but we've got oats and, and some other species in that cocktail. Uh, and the idea that something in that cocktail should work at at least one of the locations across the state. So we're trying to cover our, our basis on that. We're using the standard cover crops plus some um, things that are a little bit out of the box. So is the target to try and determine when the optimum time to plant these cover crops is? In, in, uh, in part. Okay. But the growing season is so limited in mm. the fall, especially after corn, that one of the ideas is if you can get the cover crop established uh, earlier, so when the corn comes off or the soybeans come out, that the crop will be germinated and ready to go. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult in, in in corn and soybeans. Uh, it's much easier to do this kind of project in, in either uh, silage uh, conditions or with seed corn. And so it's a logical fit there. We're, we're trying to stretch it into more um, uh, normal uh, corn and soybean production areas. Right, and to a larger extent of the state as yeah, well. Yeah, to cover more acres. Yeah. Uh, what about moisture? That has to uh, be yeah, at yeah. least a concern of making it a limiting factor in some parts. Certainly, and that's why we have two irrigated locations and two dryland. Uh, you know, it spans the state east to west almost entirely, and not the panhandle. Mm -hmm. um, but we're monitoring water. Um, Derry Karen is part of the project and is an irrigation engineer, so we're, we're going to be monitoring soil water and crop use, uh, uh, one of our main focuses is looking at the response of the subsequent crop, whether it's corn or soybeans, and seeing if, if the cover crop had any kind of impact on it. And as you go further west, it's gonna be a water issue that we'll have to really focus on.